Good morning, everyone. My name is Marcin Uta, and I would like to welcome you today into an ETAP conference. We'll be talking about the managing European access safety requirements using ETAP. If you don't know me, go to my LinkedIn profile. You will see all the information there. So let's start. Uh, my idea for today was to go uh, briefly through ACFA standards in European Union, or to be more precise in IEC uh, locations, uh, approach typically seen in the EU, uh, project example, which I think is the most important one here, and conclusions. We will have a Q&A session later, so we'll add it there. So to, let, to make it briefly, um, the base standard as far as in the EU is EN 5010. This is overall standard about the electrical safety uh, operation of uh, general safety operation of electrical installations. And it is harmonized across European Union uh, countries, better or worse, but it has an Annex B6 about the ARCLASH. There is, was ISA guide, ISA is International Social Security Association that made the guide for the uh, safety about the uh, arc flash hazard, thermal arc flash hazard. And it, it is kind of best uh, document so far in EU, but it was the brief document pre-DGUV uh, release. So generally DGUV uh, later version is almost the same as it was presented in this paper, or, or actually guide, not the paper. Then we have DGUV information 203077. The latest release is from 2021. And this is a standard that is talking about the uh, ARCFASH PP selection based on box method test. And we'll talk about it today. Of course, there's NFP 70E. Um, it is widely used in EU. <laughs> and there are sometimes direct references to it. And there is also IEEE 1584, which is a technical standard how to calculate the arc flash hazard calculation. And it is actually very widely used in, in European Union. So um, that was from, let's say, high level point of view. But from hardware point of view, you also might look into IC6271, which is generally standard about the making high voltage switch gears. And there is one part about the internal arc classification, so passive uh, design for the switch gear about uh, internal arc. Uh, and this can be implemented in ETAP. So if you know parameters, you can implement it there. There is a technical report, also IEC 61641. And this is the same, but for low voltage. So it's not exactly the same, but it's the same topic, internal arc for the low voltage assemblies. And uh, it's the same, you can also implement this as a check in ETAP. Then we have IC62271-112. It is an interesting topic because it's about the high voltage switch gear and ultra fast earthing switch. So this is coming more often to the uh, transmission and to the medium voltage switch gears. There is a uh, IEC uh, technical standard 63107 which is talking about integration of arc for mitigation systems into the power, system, uh, power switch gear or, or assemblies. Mm, this is relatively new. Uh, there is 60947, which is talking about the arc quenching devices. So if you have arc quencher, now there is a standard very nice uh, about it. And you actually can implement and you should implement it in ETAP. It's a very nice feature. There is also arc card detection, so optic detection systems, how we call it, uh, 604947, the same standard. And as well, you might implement it in ETAP as a one of the solutions. This is very nice. And at the end, we have arc flash detection, AFDD, which is arc flash detection device. Uh, more commercial base. This is the, the small, uh, in the size of miniature circuit breaker type. Uh, looking type uh, device which is detecting serious arcs in the compass. It's limited, um, I think it's 63 amp and lower to 16. So, what's the approach in EU? Uh, actually, there are two. 
I would say. Uh, so the first is, I would say, most common so far is IEEE 1584 uh, combined for access hazard calculations. Then NFP 70E, uh, the latest release 2021 uh, for reference for PPE selection and general, uh, the way how to work with the uh, results, how to work the electrical safety plan. But we generally have something like this in Europe. And then IEC 61482-1-1, which is open arc test PPE for PPE. And specifically for you, we will follow ELIM, which is energy limit. It was released 2019, if I remember correctly. And uh, yeah, let's say that's it. And less common, which is what we're comparing today, is DGUV uh, information tool 3077 for uh, Arkhaj hazard calculations as well. And then IEC 6142-1-2 for box method test for PPE, which is usually, uh, usually it is AP Arc Protection Class 1, Arc Protection Class 2. There are only two classes there. So, because um, we don't have that much time, so <laughs> let's have a look into DGUV itself. So if you look, this is uh, this documentation you might download from the website if you Google it. Um, if you look inside, um, it's possible because it's relatively, I would say, simple calculation. So calculation for the uh, arc energy, as you might see here, uh, you see KP factor, uh, voltage, short circuit current, free phase, maximum, and the time. Time is uh, limited to one second. And as you might see, uh, this is tripping time. So tripping time is based on the minimum short circuit current uh, and the KB factor. KB is the factor that is actually making this arc flash or arcing current. And the KB so far is given as a 50% for low voltage and for medium voltage and above is one. So the same current. And that's how we select the tripping time. And for the KP, you might follow KP max uh, value. And we will discuss it or Mm, let's say normalized uh, arc power uh, KP factor, which is based on the R over X uh, uh, value and the distance uh, between the electrodes. Then you see it's, it's changing, so it's given in table. But there are actually two ways of, uh, mm, for those two factors, we, we will use DGUV or Shao and Halinka method, and I will, I will look into it. Then you have a KT, which is reflection factor, which is related with the enclosure. So it's open arc or in the box. And you see it's in the box is one and in uh, enclosure is 2.4. Um, this is a multi multiplication factor or coefficient that you use to increase the PPE rating, I would say this way. So one is the distance. This is the same that we have in IGP-1584. But the KT is a factor that you uh, take into account that the energy is uh, concentrated, like here, you know, directed, or it's spread away uh, in sphere mode, which is KT 2.4. Okay, so that was for the DGUV and to IEEE 1584, it's much harder with the latest release. Probably it would be better if we compare it to max power method because they are more similar, but if you compare with IEEE 1584, you see it's not there is no short look inside this because it's getting more complicated. But long story short, we have we calculate our uh, our current. Our current has some uh, variation as well, which there is a coefficient for variation. You see, it's relatively long. Um, overall, uh, the arc uh, we calculate for three different points on different different voltages like 600, 207, 2700, 14, 300. And then we extrapolate the voltage that we need at this, uh, for example. And then we have the same for the energy. Of course, there is a time, for, which is tripping time, uh, which take into account this current. Um, there is a distance for the electrodes as well. And there is a coefficient factor for the electrode configurations. This is... Uh, yeah, it was there, it's new, uh, but this coefficient factor is also, um, oh, this one is for the enclosure, but also there is a, a factor for the configurations of the um, electrodes. 
So sorry, there is no short look into IEEE 1584. This is part of the separate webinar. If you look for the comparison, that's what I did uh, between those two methods, uh, you will see that, okay, for IEEE 1584, we calculate ArcFast boundary. For DGUV, there is no ArcFast boundary calculation. Technically, it's possible, but it's not really in the standard. We both calculate ArcFast energy. We uh, have a PP selection here based on OpenR, which is EBD50, ATPV, or ELIM for Europe. And for DGUV, there is a box method test, which is ACLAS APC1, APC2. That's it. Uh, do we calculate line side? So in IEEE 1584, it's uh, very clearly said that we should do it. In DGUV, it's not mentioned, but technically it's possible. Well, actually, we'll do it. So it's not really part of standard, I would say. Uh, enclosure effect. Yes, yes. So we both have an enclosure effect. We don't have electro configurations in DGUV. Um, equation range, uh, 208, 15 kV, or 14, 300, but up to 15 kV. Um, DGUV states is low voltage up to 110 kV. Well, this area is uh, something to discuss because there is no background calculations given to prove that it's uh, all good. or we'll test it somehow. Uh, defined bottom level for calculations. Uh, yeah, it's given in IEEE 15 after the latest release. Uh, so 2000 amp, 240 volts, three phase, and uh, DGUV has 1000 amp and 400 volts. But um, again, no background from where. Maximum uh, escape time, I would say, as per NFPA. So here is two seconds. This is not limit for calculations, but more like for the escape uh, time for the person that is uh, under the arc rush event. And did you state one second? And we'll stick to this for the calculation later. Is the sociological study required? Yes, yes, yes. For the uh, IEEE, for did you is not specifically mentioned, but generally, yeah, we need sociological current values for to calculate anything. Yeah, so it's clear that we need it. No requirements for selectivity, no requirements for equipment evaluation, but it's not necessarily, uh, uh, I would say, focus of the standard. This is part of the design process, more or less. So um, before, uh, because I did calculations uh, on before ETAP 22. In ETAP 22, you now have this DGUV calculations as a part of the engine. So you can apply to the network that you do the model. And before it was uh, not by standard. So and the other standards doesn't have it, any other software. So there was a few solutions to how to do it before, if you have license like 21, 20 and, and, and 19 or something, then what you might do, you might use the uh, batch calculator. So you have to manually fill, fill in all the data. Uh, if you have the, all the data, uh, you might use the DGUV from the website, Excel based uh, manual calculations, which is purely manual. There's nothing really automatic there, but it's also interesting uh, source. And you might play with the short circuit currents in the coefficients to get those, you know, minimum, maximum, but also tripping times for the 50% of the minimum bolted fault current. So you might play with this as well. Uh, if you have a software that will give you the tripping time of the device and then combine everything into the batch calculator and run all, all the calculations. So that was pure 22. Luckily, we all had already have 22 versions. And I want to show you the project example I did uh, both for IEEE and, and DGUV, but I have to modify it slightly for this presentation to show you some more things. And the project has 280 locations. It's like fast moving consumer gut, uh, consumer goods. Um, there was multiple selectivity issues, uh, transformer protection issues. Aquas resins were actually because of this rather low to medium and uh, not very high, um, but uh, you will see <laughs> the influence for it. Uh, we had a lot of, uh, we have actually a lot of hardware improvements on the site. So it has influence for the results. And it was fully done in ETA 22. I was reading updated to latest version, but there was some uh, release recently. So it's not latest version. Uh, that's the model. So it was a side with six transformers, medium voltage ring, uh, ring medium voltage, and then low voltage uh, sides. Uh, I will show you, I will switch to ETA uh, in a minute to show you this so what we what the goal was for the ARCLAS study for this to show you uh, 
DJUV results and with uh, uh, variation for KP factor with Shao and Halinka uh, method or let's say uh, calculation. So this would be soup scenarios. We'll compare DGUV with I2P 1584 and we check overall results and implication for operation of this electrical installation. So if we will select DGUV or I2P 1584 and then at the end PP selection. So I did four scenarios for I2P 1584, four for DGUV. And uh, if you will see it, everything is limited to one second. So we can actually compare it on the same level. Um, not as, for example, two seconds by NFP, but I limit everything to one second, just so we have on the same page. And to give you idea, let's shift to ETAP. So that's the model uh, that I showed you before. Let me jump into it. We will look in the transformer one, but before this, uh, I want to show you the parameterization. So if you are in the uh, ETAP, the one that I show you, the batch method is here. Um, and it will pop up. So if you can, you can have both AC and DC calculation. We talk about the AC today. So if you don't have anything else or previous 21, you might use this. The batch method is actually useful because you might upload all the data in the Excel, modify it manually, and then rerun all the method as normally it works here. The difference is that, uh, that I saw that the Shao and Halinka is here. So for example, you might select DGUV or Shao and Halinka modification. So we'll see about the, what's the conclusion from it. Uh, of course, the reflectivity factor that I show it's here. So if you play with it, you will see that it's changing by the table. So it makes the implications later for the um, for the overall calculations and uh, yeah, I will leave it like this for a moment then if you go uh, for the modeling so for example we were talking about the transformer one uh, we'll be talking about the transformer one so if you parameterize uh, for Arcflash so of course I have everything in IEC so it's IEC, IEC this is the IEEE configuration, and then this is DGUV. So if you start to modify, you see its reflectivity factor is changing. Uh, not sure what I had before, I think it should be one. And then you also have a shock protection data which is different for Europe, or different, maybe not different, but it's um, different than NFPA. So we might select based on DGUV, but in fact, we actually look for the, is it EN5010? And as I say, different uh, harmonization according for each country. So you might select this here and also for the glove selection, IEC or ISTM. This is IEC variations. And the next, next thing that will go, it's uh, scenarios. So as I said, I prepare multiple scenarios, but as a base method, um, so we have DGUV, one second. As you see, method is selected as DGUV for IEC calculations and all those uh, so variation for PPE. Uh, for solution method, DGUV for the KV max or Shao Halinka. So this will be two scenarios that you will see the modifications here. If you select actually ANSI here, you will not be able to select DGUV. So that's something to remember. Clearing times, one second. So this is limited already here, and maybe I can show you this. This is one second here, but if you select uh, uh, IEEE 1584, it's also one second. So we'll go back to it. Short cycle standard for DGUV. Okay, we go with IEC, and there is no selection because it goes man, min, max as a part of calculation. So if I switch to uh, IEEE 1584, this is actually minimum, so I select by manually by C factors because uh, I think can it will not be used in if I select it uh, uh, minimum in ETAB now. And I want to see separately minimum maximum values. Um, clearing time is one second. Method is as well IEEE, but with IEC short circuit standard. So we don't run NC, but we run IEC for it. 
And I would say that's all for the variation. So when we run it, because um, yeah, I will not run it because it would take minutes. So this is, for example, from IEEE 1584, summary for the, all the findings that we have here. You cannot really compare DGV and IEEE at the same uh, page, but if you switch to Arc Energy and you switch to Arc Energy here, then you will see DGV results for all the four scenarios, and you can see them side by side. So we will not go through it now, but I will show you a summary from it uh, in the presentation. And let me switch back to PPT. So you've seen this, all of this. Um, oh, there's maybe one thing that I haven't uh, so show you that I create with this. Uh, maybe let's change to it. What I didn't show you, sorry, was that mm -hmm. I actually uh, we play with this because I have eight scenarios. So we play with the scenario wizard and you actually can find it here. So this is the juv four scenarios and I took with 1584 four scenarios based for existing and recommend with recommendations. So let's go back to it. So if I show you summary from the results, you will see the minimum uh, existing recommended, maximum and recommended. You will see that overall below 1.2, there's a lot of locations. There are some locations with up to 12. Up to 40, there were a few, and above 40, we don't have anything. And if you do the same, so this is an overview for all the locations above 1.2. I don't know, it's 20, 40, 30 locations. And if you look for the DGUV, then you will find that uh, we actually have quite a lot of locations, uh, uh, which are between above 50 kilojoules and uh, above 320 kilojoules, which... Uh, We'll go back as a summary to it, but you will see the small difference. And if you look at it, you will see a lot of red. So you might see on the recommendation that we've, be, we've been able to fix some of them, but not all of them. And their va values are like 3,000, 7,000 kilojoules, which is very high. So uh, this is just look into it. We, don't, we cannot really analyze everything today. So what was the outcome and what's, this, uh, what's next with it? Mm. So if you look on this project, I, okay, we improved the selectivity with recommended settings because that's the easiest thing you can do. It's very handy to have it up uh, to do it. Uh, we reduced the arc flash uh, with arc quencher for low water switches because they will be replaced uh, very soon. There will be also other switch gears will be modernized and they will come with the maintenance mode switch for the low voltage, main low voltage breaker. So it's not included in the study. And the medium voltage will come with the internal arc classification test already. So there will be passive arc tested. Um, there was selectivity issues, and I will show you this here. Um, I think this is the easiest. So that's existing protection of the transformer one. Medium voltage to low voltage. And if you look at it, you will see that the um, low voltage is actually okay-ish. But the medium voltage is overprotecting everything. So normally you will improve it, but if you if you see this, uh, it's like uh, fully clear that it will make our flash results worse after improvement because we have to rise the settings, rise the time. Or well, plus you see that there might be a problems with starting the transformer because of the inverse current point. Um, so uh, definitely, it's not good generally speaking. And that was the first uh, approach that we did for this site to make it better. So in this case, it can work, it can work okay. And uh, if you look at it uh, from Marcos' point of view, probably the result will slightly go up, but still should be okay. Now we'll show you this in a minute. But generally, this should be uh, there should be no problems with transformer. There should be no problem with starting transformer. The transformer is protected well from short circuit on the medium voltage. It's protected well on the low voltage side. Shouldn't be a problem, should work well. And, and this will improve in the future as well, a little bit different than here. So if you look, compare DGUV and IGP for, for this location, you'll see that uh, before we start anything, you see the recommendations for IGP 1584, which is like three, 
3.6 calories, so below 4 calories. It's a rather low value. Uh, after improvements, it goes up, it goes to 15 calories, which is not something you call improvements, but that's because of the selectivity compromise. And But I know that we'll fix this location by our quenching devices uh, next year or this year still. But if you look on the digital view, you'll see that the values are very high. This is like 800 kilojoules, 500 kilojoules, uh, 3000 kilojoules after modifications. And this will mean that you actually cannot work on this equipment, even if you have a PPE, because PPE, the APC class 2 is 320 kilojoules. Even taking into account some reflectivity um, factors, which is generally used to um, or increase artificially rating of the PPE. So with reflectivity rate of 500, uh, this is 500 kilojoules. If you give the 1.5, you end up like 700 uh, 480 kilojoules or something like this for PPE, which is still not enough to work there. But this is now playing with the numbers, really. So you will see, like, you uh, think about the implications for it, but generally it would be very hard to work in this location if you follow DGOV. And this is something I found on many uh, studies where I compare those two methods, or I have to do both methods, where I2584 is generally, like, moderate or okay to work, so you still can match PPE, and on DGUV, there is no PP rating. There should be like APC class three and four for it, but it's not there. So conclusion from overall study was that if we take uh, Shaw and Halinka factors uh, for the calculation, it's getting less conservative. So I can show you this here. So this is Shaw and Halinka. This is the normal DGUV KP max. So you see it's, it's, uh, it is significantly lower. And if you look on the uh, well, overall, that's what I said, that uh, we very fast ex extend the APC2 class. APC2 cl class is 7 kiloamps for half seconds at 400 volts. It's not very uh, hard test, I would say. Um, DGUV use one second, NFP use two seconds rule, but however, we reach you might imagine that uh, one second is uh, a very low time for escape. And also, uh, most of the protective devices will actually sometimes work much longer time. So it's not that we have to be um, below one second. Like five seconds is the required automatic disconnection time, maximum time for uh, distribution uh, devices, distribution network. Uh, network, sorry, distribution feeders in the low voltage. Uh, so that's not exactly uh, limiting to one second is rather, I would say, um, optimistic. Uh, and there is no additional variation for the R clash uh, current. So this is the situation where we can uh, jump between the uh, instantaneous settings and short trip time settings, for example. We don't have it in the DGUV, but it's, let's say, kind of included in the E uh, minimum arc uh, variation, so based on the short circuit minimum current, but uh, there is no second check for it. But it technically is not, no, I don't think it's a really big issue to implement it in the software itself. Things to consider, so from my perspective as well. So I2P 1584 is not really in line with the EU uh, or EN 1510 live working zones. Uh, but on the other hand, it's not in line really with the NFPA 70 e shock boundaries as well. So uh, I think it's uh, as, as defined ergonomic working distance, and this is fine. This is also in DGUV range because DGUV specify for low voltage 30 to 50 centimeters range. So this will be in line with this as well. For example, 45 centimeters will be in line. Um, DGUV and uh, on the other hand is uh, quite well coordinated with EN5010, where we have 30 centimeters for low voltage um, for the live working zone. Uh, it's also in line with the switchgear internal arc classification test, where we sp uh, specify 30 centimeters as a distance from the switchgear for safety distance during the test. Uh, on the other hand, this is applicable only for low voltage. Because if you go to the medium voltage, then yeah, PPE are not really tested this way. The distance is still the same. Um, 
Is there anything else? Like Arkfash Bondar is probably the biggest missing thing there. However, in technically you can recalculate it. If you used 50 kilojoules as an arc energy and you would like to see where you reach this, it's a kind of reverse engineering, reverse calculation. So technically it's still possible. I think you can even, I think I did with batch calculator this kind of reverse check to find out what's the, really the Arkfash boundary to DGUV. But technically it's not in the standard. From my personal view, uh, if I have to leave some open questions, because we will have a Q&A session. Uh, generally speaking, like, do we need DGUV 203 once we have IEEE 1584, which looks more precise? Um, do we need box method test for PPE once there is an LM in place? This is the same IEC standard. So if LM is in place, I don't know if we need box to method tests anymore. Um, would be nice to see clearly defined scope for calculation. So the stop point where we can uh, say Arkfash is not needed and where it's actually needed. We have it now, uh, like 2000 uh, 230 volts, but generally uh, would be nice to see something like up to for the installations above 63 amps or 50 amps. We don't need PPE uh, for Arkfash, for example, or below. And something like this is specified in, uh, in Dutch uh, norms. But I don't know what the background for it. And it would be nice to see the more focus in IAC world for guides like NFP 70B and NFP 70E, where we actually have a complete guide how to do everything. For a moment, it's uh, very split across multiple IAC and product related uh, standards. And that's all today from my side. And I would like to hear some of your questions in the Q&A session. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.